little less than normal here lately. And we know that because of that, uh, maybe there are some family members or some friends that have not had the opportunity to uh, come out just yet of their homes and um, not feeling comfortable to do so in the midst of, of what we've been in. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to encourage something today that maybe you've never heard here in this sanctuary. Um, if you uh, are wanting to bring in a family member to our graduating families, or maybe someone else isn't here that you would like them to be a part of this portion of the service, I'm going to encourage you, FaceTime, right? You guys have these devices. You're able to pull that up. Um, I want to give those families an opportunity to be here when they're not able to be here, right? This is a big day. We're excited for our seniors. And so I'm going to give you just a few minutes to get that set up if you're wanting to do so and uh, go into just a couple announcements here for you. We want to remind you um, that we are here on Facebook Live, uh, Bluffton, uh, the Bluffton Nazarene Church. And so uh, we have those opportunities. In the coming weeks, we're hoping that we are, are running beyond just this computer screen right here, right? Um, we are still working on getting the technology together, and uh, we have some new gadgets that have come in and some computers and stuff like that, that we are able to function better with these cameras that we have installed. Um, and so we're looking forward to that and getting that together. So um, stay tuned these next few weeks. Um, stay posted with us. We're glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or you're watching on screen. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Also want to remind you, if you have a child or a teenager, uh, church camp is happening this year. And so if you are interested and you have some forms that uh, you'd like to get, Grace, is Pastor Grace here? Where can they access the kids' forms? Online. Is there a specific place? Is it the district website? Okay, you can access that on the district website if you're interested in doing so. Or um, you can hit up Pastor Grace and she will make sure she gets you directed where you need to. Uh, can you send me out for just a second? I'm going to get my mic here. You might want to put it up, yeah. Okay, I'll try to condense this. I'll try to condense this here real quickly. I had a conversation with one of the churches on our district um, about church camp, and they shared with me that they were not coming this year. And I was a little disappointed, not so much in their decision, just uh, because I respect where people are feeling in the midst of this, but I was a little discouraged in the fact that this is a realistic opportunity that people are not going to come to church camp um, due to COVID. And, um, and so I got the sleeping a little bit that night. It was a little restless, and I woke up the next day, and I called a friend of mine. Um, you guys have seen him here in the church, Josh Goodman, and he's kind of my tech guy that I go to, and I said, Josh, is there a way for us to stream services just for students that are not able to be at church camp? And so he started walking me through the logistics, and so um, long story short, short, I started to connect with some of these different areas and how I needed to stream this. One of them was Olivet and trying to figure out how to produce the sound quality that would be needed for that. They send a band and so they were sharing with me that uh, we are the only Nazarene camp that they are attending this summer. Um, and I said, wait, hold on a second. Are you telling me I have an opportunity to provide church camp to an entire Olivet region? They said, well, we weren't thinking of it that way. But yeah, you have that opportunity if you figure this out. I said, well, that's awesome. So I started talking to Brett Foster, who is uh, the, my right-hand man for camp. And he's connected with the Mount Vernon region, which represents uh, West Virginia... Help me here. West Virginia, Ohio, Eastern Kentucky, correct? And he was sharing with me, um, he was talking to their president. They are not offering um, any physical church camp. And so they're kind of interested in partnering and being a part of senior high camp streaming as long as we're not promoting all of it, right, during the stream session, just during the stream session, because obviously they're a Mount Vernon region. So I was sharing that then with our president for our district, and he was saying, I'm in a group that I can put that out for all of USA and Canada if you guys figure that out. So we have an opportunity. We're swinging for the fence, but we are hoping that the wind blows that ball out of the park, right? And um, that we have an opportunity, and maybe not districts as a whole taking part of that, but churches here and there that do not have that opportunity. And so we're really excited about this. Um, be in prayer. Um, any of my tech-savvy people, um, come see me because I need your help, Jim and Carl, all you guys. I got to figure out how to make Wi-Fi better down at Shiloh Park. So um, that's, the first, <laughs> that's the first thing. But um, yeah, so be in prayer. That's an awesome opportunity. I'm excited. who is actually one of, if you ask the students, probably one of the top two speakers, Stretch Dean. 
Yeah. You were there, yep. So, so this could be a big thing, and, and that puts a lot of pressure. So, and this all has to happen within what, like? Next probably yeah. week or two. Yeah. <laughs> so, so just be praying that, that this is a way that we can get this price out to a, a younger generation across the whole nation and in Canada. You know, I'll, I'll share kind of a cool thing as I've been reflecting on this, too. I got stretch. Um just thinking for our students, not thinking about a pandemic was coming. This was a, a conversation I was having back in the fall with Stretch. And um, it's cool how God knows the future and sets things in, in place, right? And um, so to know that we have an opportunity for one of the top speakers at NYC this last year, where almost 9,000 people were at taking part uh, in our camp that now people are going to be more interested to, to gravitate into that. So we're excited for that, and so we ask that you be in prayer. But for our students, if you want to go to church camp, see me, or you can access that on our Instagram page. It's in the link in the bio. Or um, for, for anyone who doesn't have Instagram but has Facebook, that's also there as well. So was there any other announcements that you were needing me to touch on? Um, camp meetings happening, but it's virtual. Um, so we'll keep you posted on those types of information coming up. But... Let's take this time and focus on our seniors. And um, class of 2020, we're here to celebrate you. And by you, I mean each of you, right? <laughs> we're getting ready to celebrate the fact that you have ended high school. And I'm sure, just like the rest of us, this year has not been anything what we thought it would be, right? Um, and so, but we want to take this moment to um, focus on your achievements the things that you've accomplished in your time here, and how incredible your run has been. And so um, before we start uh, with the rest of this, I just want to bring them up here so you have the chance to see them, and we can highlight them and applaud them. So first up, uh, Grace Dunmoyer. Grace is graduating from uh, Southern Wells. She's uh, uh, planning to attend Purdue-Fort Wayne uh, for elementary education, correct? And so uh, Grace, Grace uh, has been a joy to have in youth group and have enjoyed having her around. Abby Enix, Abigail, right? I've got to read your school name here, all right? Abby's graduating from Indiana Academy for Science, Mathematics, and Humanities. All right, that's a long one, right? And so she's also going to be attending Purdue Fort Wayne, and she's studying education and humanity sci sciences, right? Pathway, social work, all right? And so um, congratulations to Abigail and her accomplishments here. Also, uh, Zachary Harps. Zachary is <laughs> joining us. Uh, Zachary is the son of April Bailey, and he's graduating from Norwell High School. Um, right now, he's planning to work, and he's currently at McDonald's, right? Hoping to maybe go to McDonald's or to Walmart. From, uh, and then he's also hoping to attend Huntington University for graphic design. And so uh, congratulations to you, Zach. And then uh, next but not least, Brenna Mason. <laughs> Brenna is graduating from Huntington North High School, right? And she's going to be attending Indiana Wesleyan University here in the fall. And she is going to be studying medical technology. All right, and so we have an awesome opportunity. These are ours, right? These are our students, and so I'm so proud of them. Would you guys, before we go any further, just give them a round of applause. <laughs> Jay, if you want to hit the video there for us. I love that phrase, starting now, because we're not focusing on just today or where you've been in the past. We're focusing on where you're going. 
And chances are that these last few years have been filled with some, some awesome memories. Maybe you've experienced some high moments, right? Maybe you've also experienced some low moments in your life. You've reached milestones that you had hoped uh, to reach, and you've worked hard. But today, what we want to do is take this time to share those moments with others, your accomplishments, your accolades, those memories that you've created. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do. I don't get this opportunity much longer, right? They challenge you in some way. So here's what I want you to do today. At some point, I want you to go and I want you to find a picture that sums up and reminds you of what high school was, right? Maybe it's your senior picture or a graduation picture, or maybe it was something hanging out, being goofy with friends, or whatever that is for you in an extracurricular activity, but I want you to find that. And I want you to take a moment, I just want you to write something about that, right? What was, what was that memory that you had that you can recall, that you can come back to? But then I want you to share that with your family today, all right? Chances are you're going to probably go out to eat or something like that, right? So share it with them. Add it in a group text with your family. Post it on social media. I'm not asking you to write your Val Victorian speech, right? I'm not asking you to do that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. But what I want you to do is just take a moment and reflect on where you've been. Um, your friends, your family, they're going to be excited to hear it because we're celebrating you today, right? But I want to talk about what's next for you. You guys have already made some big decisions about what's next in life and where you're going. But maybe more than ever before, the choices you're making in your life now are going to be more up to you. Starting now, your decisions about the friends that you hang out with, what you do with your time, the person that you date, the way you handle your money, and how you treat other people are going to affect you, the quality and the direction of your life even more than ever. That's a lot of responsibility. And maybe for some of you, that's exciting. Others of you, that's terrifying. It's a lot of pressure. But I want to be here to take that pressure off of you a little bit. Making decisions for yourself is not the same as making decisions by yourself. Your responsibility has grown, but here's the thing. You're not on your own. You have family members that are out here right now, right? Right? They've been there for you. They've encouraged you. They've told you the tough things when you didn't want to hear it at times, right? They've given you advice. They've listened to you. But as you look out here, there's more than just your family. There's your church family, right? There's people out here that believe in you and encourage you and want to support you just as much. And so I want you to do something. I want you to call them. I want you to check in with them. We live in this technology world where you can FaceTime with people and see them, right? Keep them up to date on your life. Don't let them just celebrate you right now, but in a year from now, let them continue to be celebrating you and where you've been because you've stayed in touch with them. Maybe that means you have to set a reminder on your phone to connect with them, but don't disconnect from them. You don't even have to wait till you move away or you live in a different city. You can begin now, right? Starting now, connect with people that can help you take those pressures off. Before the day's over, I imagine your family's going to probably share a meal together, right? That's what families do most. But here's what I want you to do. Take that moment and thank your family members for what they've meant to you during these last four years, right? Share with them a little bit of your feelings in your heart and what this has meant to you and as you see them and how they've helped you through different journeys. Make lunch go a little bit longer, right? It's okay. But here's the thing. Families, I'm not letting you guys off the hook here. I want you guys to do the same back. I don't care if you're just a parent, you have siblings, whatever that is. Honor this senior and let them know what they've meant to you. Share with them what it's going to be like when you don't have them around necessarily every day. Because that's when you understand how valuable they were to the family and what they meant. Um, and so that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. Even though graduation has not looked like it would have been, right? That doesn't mean the celebration is over. It's still happening. We're celebrating you. Today's worth celebrating because you are worth celebrating. And so on behalf of everyone that's here right now, whether family or friends or those that are viewing at home on their screens, right, we want to say congratulations to the class of 2020. 
We're so proud of you, and we can't see, can't wait to see what happens next, starting now, right? As we get ready to kind of close this section, we've, uh, I'll go ahead and, parents, if you want to come up, family members, we're going to have a time of prayer around your college students. And so um, bring the Kleenexes, right? Keep your, keep your uh, tears wiped away. Students, you guys know where you're going, all right? So if you guys want to go ahead and take your places at the altar, we'll allow you guys to go ahead and do so. But uh, as they're getting in place, I want to let you guys know that um, the students are receiving gifts uh, on behalf of our church. And so they are receiving, uh, most of them, either a Bible, a study Bible if they did not have one, or they're receiving an envelope that has a gift card to the Christian book distributors. That way they can go purchase a journal or a Bible or some sort of devotional book on their own. However they would like to enhance their spiritual lives, we're giving them that opportunity. We're also giving them an essential need in college, right? A Starbucks gift card, because we all know how much Starbucks is essential. But then also, one of the coolest things that I think that we're giving them is a little jump stick. Um, Those are something that you're always going to use and need uh, at some point with this digital world that we live in. But on that jump stick, one has a logo of our church to remind them of where they've been and the training that they've received. But on that is a letter from their youth pastor personally to them. Also, there was someone in the church that they said has been a huge mentor to them that also wrote them a personal letter. We've also provided on there a reading devotional plan that will get them through the Bible in a year. Um, That gives them an opportunity to stay in God's Word. But then one of the things we added this year in this whole concept of starting now is a short two- to three-day devotional of orientation into college and beginning to connect those dots of how life after high school begins to work and how to stay connected with God in college. And so we're giving them that on behalf of you guys, um, the church. It's not just something from the youth group, but you guys help provide those opportunities. But um, I want to encourage you guys to continue to tap into their lives, continue to help guide them and shape them. And, um, you know, I've been in a lot of conversations with just young adults here in, in the last handful of months, and they're really just looking and searching and seeking. And I think that's where the church needs to pick that up a little bit more and just help them and rely, uh, giving them advice, even if it's just a a quick card or a a text message or a phone call, whatever that is, let them know that you remember them because then they're going to look to you and ask for some help from time to time. And that's where we can give that spiritual guidance and, and discipline. So if you guys want to, if you want to kneel, if you feel comfortable kneeling, you're welcome to do so. If not, that's fine as well. But would you guys join me in this time of prayer for, for our graduates? Lord, I, um, I'm truly blessed. I get an opportunity. I love my job. I love working with teenagers and just seeing um, what six years can do. Lord, I ask right now that you would continue to be in the lives of each of these graduates. Lord, there's a lot of decisions that are coming up, and they've known that. They've been told that. They felt the pressure of it. They've been overwhelmed by it at times. Lord, um, my prayer for them today is, is helping them understand that concept of starting now, that things matter even more now as they're beginning to, to kind of move on to their own without necessarily their parents or other um, advisors maybe being there to make those decisions for them. Lord, our prayer is that hopefully the guidance and the training that not only the parents have provided for 18 years, but that even our church for the last handful of years, that training goes into practice now. That, Lord, their faith begins to be shaped And they begin to realize what that relationship with you really has to look like. It's beyond just showing up to the Sunday school and the church because that's what we've always done or because mom forced me. But Lord, it's it's just about that relationship with the Lord that we love you so much that we can't get enough of you that you become the driving force of everything we do. That we don't agree with someone, but Lord, you call us to love them. The Lord, um, maybe we begin to, to get around a friend group that doesn't think the same way as us and believe the same way as us. And as we begin to honestly evaluate our lives, that maybe we begin to see that 
we're pulling back from you. And it's in those moments that we realize that we really do need you. Lord, I pray with each of these seniors that you would guide them in their career paths, Lord. Whether they stay the same or they change, Lord, that you want to use them. And I allow that they would hear from you to be used by you. Lord, that they don't have to be a pastor or a missionary or whatever to be a force for you. They can be messengers of God even in their own fields. And I ask that you would use that. Lord, I, I, I'm so encouraged by these seniors and just uh, thank you for just their involvement in our youth group and in and, and our church. And Lord, just hearing their hearts and their passions, Lord, that has just been exciting for me to, to know um, that they're driven by something. May you be that source, though, at the end of it. I ask that you give them guidance and safety and continue to watch over them. Lord, I want to pray over the families as well, as this is an adjustment for them. The house is going to maybe look a little more empty or um, a little bare or maybe not hearing from our child as much. Lord, I ask that you would be that filler in those voids at times, Lord. But Lord, you would give guidance to even the parents. Their students are going to come to them with different questions because they're becoming more of adults. And I ask that the examples that our parents and our families are setting continue to point back to you. Lord, I just thank, say thank you, and um, we give you praise. Continue to be with these seniors and, and uh, their families. In your name, amen. One last time, as they're kind of heading back to their seats, um, they have not had a normal senior year and I think we have an opportunity to just really make them feel special. They have tables out in the narthex. We allowed them to, to set up this year to highlight that. So stop and talk to them. Stop and see their, their tables and their memories. But as they're going back to their seat, could we just give them one more applause? Good morning, church. If you guys think today is a glorious day, why don't you stand with us and let's worship together. That'll be you before long. I'm going to have all my seniors next year sing. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you yeah, You called my name And I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day you call my name and i ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day
I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I am breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you called my name, then I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. The sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You believe this? You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Oh, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. My Father's house. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. Me, I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
A mighty fortress is our God. My wall that's never failing. Our helper, he amid the Ills prevailing. our ancient foe, he seeks to work us woe. His class and power are great, and armed with cruel is not his equal. The Lord is our God. To you we lift our hands. For you alone the rock on which we stand. Now what we fear, for you have overcome our rescuer, our hope, the Holy One. Did we in our own strength confide? striving would be losing. Were not the right men on our side, the men of God's own choosing. You ask who Jesus, it is He, the Lord of hosts, His name, from age to age the same, and He must win the battle. we stand. Now what shall we fear? For you have overcome our rescuer, our hope, the Holy One. That word above all No thanks to them abide. The Spirit and the gifts are ours. Through Him who with us sided. Let good then go, this mortal life also, the body they may kill, God's truth abides yet still, His kingdom is forever. We stand. 
Now what shall we fear? For you have overcome A rescuer, our hope, the Holy One The Lord is our God To you to us song that we sang last week you know and even even though God is here with us and he is here with us we still need to invite him to come and and be a part of of this with us so let's do that together and God you're welcome here Can't go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be Not enough unless you come. Will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are. Will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow, in my weakness your glory appears. Not Unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are, will you meet me here again? I'm not enough, I'm not enough, unless you come, will you meet here again Cause all I want is all you are Will you meet me here again Not for a minute was I forsaken? The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place, the Lord is in this place. Come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place, 
the Lord is in this place. Oh, kiddos come up to the front rows again and join me. Yeah, you can sit there. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, how many of you guys have spent the weekend outside? Anybody? The weather has been really nice. It's not been raining. Yep, I see some adults too. Um, it's been really nice weather. So when we go outside, hey Michaela, can you put that behind you? Um, when we go outside, we play games and we even go swimming. Do you have a swimming pool, Carter? Kaden, sorry. Um, so we go outside, we play our games, we have our fun, but then we also, we can have the opportunity um, to let things grow. So have any of you guys been on a farm or lived on a farm, seen a farm? Seen a farm? I'm sure you've seen a farm. We're in the Midwest. What about, have you guys ever had a garden at your house? Garden? Have you ever helped something grow? Watered it? Yeah, cool. So what are some of the things that we need? I'm going to kind of show you so you can just tell your parents as loud as you can, okay? So what's some stuff that I have? Tools. Okay, what is this? Shovel. A rake. Yep, good job. And then what about what's in this bottle? Water. Yeah. What else do we need for our garden? Yep, we need dirt and we need seeds. The seeds are what grow, right? Yeah. Oh, no, they're not to eat. Sorry, Travis. Um, so our seeds um, grow in the garden. So Jesus told parables to his disciples and people that followed him, right? Do you guys remember what parables are? Can you show me a thumbs up? Anybody remember? Parables are stories that Jesus used to tell about the kingdom of God, okay? So parable just means stories. So Jesus tells this parable to the disciples, a story to the disciples about a farmer, and he has his seeds, and he goes out into his field, and he's throwing them out, and all the seeds land on different types of soil. So there's four types. I'm going to give you motions, and so when I say them, I want you to do them, okay? So the first type of soil is a path. Can you guys make a path? Yep. So the first type of soil was a path where the seeds fell on that. And when they fell on the path, motion, um, <laughs> the, the birds came and the birds ate it because it wasn't in the ground. So that was bad soil. Can you guys show me thumbs down? Good job. So the second type of soil that the stuff, the seeds fell on was rocky soil. Now for this, I want you to make a fist, like you're going to give someone a fist bump, but just do an air one, okay? So the second type of soil was um, rocky soil, and when the seeds fell on it, they did grow. So that was good, but soon things came along and washed the seeds away. The third type of soil was um, soil with weeds in it. Can you guys um, show me weeds best you can? With your fingers, weeds grow up. Yep. 
So this, the third type of soil was weeds. And so the weeds, the seed grew, but the weeds soon overtook the plant, okay? Um, the fourth type of soil was finally the good soil. Can you guys give me a double thumbs up? Sweet. So with this story about the farmer and the four different types of soil, do you think Jesus was trying to teach the disciples about how to garden? No. Um, Jesus was trying to teach his disciples about the kingdom of God. So the seeds represented the word of God, where the soil represented the people. So Jesus compared us to dirt, okay? So the four different types of soil, the first one was the path. Can you show me the path? The path. This was the person who heard the word of God, but that was it. They just heard it. They didn't do anything else. The second type of soil was the, can you say it? Rock. Yeah, the rocky one. This was the person who heard the word of God, but they were so excited, so overwhelmed, but slowly, because they didn't spend time with God, their seed died and their plant was washed away. The third type of soil, do you guys remember? Can you show me? The weeds. The weeds. Yeah. The weeds. So the plant grew and grew. Uh, but the weeds took over. So this type of person heard the word of God. It was planted and it grew, but they became distracted. They became distracted. So slowly the seed began to die. The plant died because they were distracted. The fourth type of soil was the... Oh, can you guys say that really loud? The, thank you, Travis. Good. Yeah, it was the good soil. So this was the person who heard the word of God, took it in, listened to it, followed God's commands, um, and spent time with God. So their plant, their heart grew and grew and grew, and they became holy as God is holy. So um, question, which would you guys like to be? The first three soils or the good soil? Can you show me with your finger? You want to be the good soil? I think the rocky soil is kind of cool because you get to do the fist bump. But I would want to be the good soil, too. So will you guys bow your heads, close your eyes with me, and let's pray, okay? Heavenly Father, um, you say in Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. And Lord, I pray that today the seeds that are planted in our minds and our hearts, that we would not be the first three soils, but we would be the good soil, that we would spend time with you, that we would seek you with all of our heart. Lord, I thank you for these children, for their families, and for the people present today in whatever manner. In your son's holy name I pray, amen. Now as you guys go back to your seat, there are purple buckets. I want you to go and grab um, your kid pack that you can do while Pastor Tim um, is speaking. Okay. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And now in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability.
Well, good morning. Thank you, Travis. You're the only one excited to be here today. I wish you could have seen him up here when he was making the path, man. His whole body was... So, it was always fun to watch the kids in action, isn't it? There's a little poem written by Benjamin Franklin that reads like this. For one of a nail, the shoe was lost. For one of a shoe, the horse was lost. And one of a horse, the rider was lost. For one of a rider, a message was lost. For one of a message, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. All for want of a horseshoe nail. In other words, because of the lost nail in the horseshoe, the kingdom was lost. The little can create such little such chaos in our lives. The loss of a horseshoe nail lost the war, lost the kingdom. I don't know if you've noticed, but it seems very chaotic in our world right now. Would you agree? How many would agree with that? Big amen. amen. Yeah, I don't mind the amens from time to time. If you want to just yell it out, even you, Travis, if you want to yell out amen once in a while, all right? But, it, you know, we look around the world and there's chaos. We hear about the rumors of wars that are going to be happening. We, we hear things about uh, terrorism going on, riots through the streets. You know, I had someone say to me throughout the week, some things about the riots, and I, I go back to my, when I was about seven, eight years old, and I remember the riots of the, of the 60s, um, and, and what took, some of the things that took place there. We see crime that just brings about chaos, so in your own life, your health that's deteriorating can bring chaos to you. Um, Chaos can be in the weather. You know, a tornado goes through or a hurricane goes through. That becomes chaos. Or for some of us, when uh, the virus hit, the economy tanked. And when it tanked, the economy became a little bit of a chaos to us, not knowing what was going to happen. Chaos seems to be everywhere, doesn't it? And today, I, I want to look at this chaos, but I want to look at it in a little different way. I, I want to talk about a controlled chaos. And you say, controlled chaos? How can chaos be controlled? I remember when I was a junior high director at a camp, there was this one game I just loved to play. I, I always said it was one of the greatest games to play with about 200 junior hires because it was controlled chaos. So let me kind of explain the game to you. We started out by telling everybody that they would be getting a card, and on this card there would be a color on it and, and a, a person in the family. So it might be like a a say a blue dad or a blue mom or a blue daughter or a blue son or a blue baby or the family dog and we would have them stand in a certain position so like the dad may be here uh, the mom may be sitting in front of them the kids will all gather around the dog would lay on on the floor and the baby is usually where in whose lap mom's lap right and so the catch was anytime you take a family portrait and that's what this was called family portrait it, this is how usually the picture is taken. And so the object of the game was you find your family, if you're the blue family, and, and you had to run and find those people, and then you had to get in that position where the dad was behind mom, mom was in the front, the baby's in the lap, the dog's in the front, and then you had your two kids, and everybody was kind of gathered around. And so you'd say, well, how's that chaotic? Well, when you have 200 junior hires, not knowing what really is going on, except they have to get in this position, it becomes very chaotic. Because here's what happens. They don't always have the same color, and they don't always have the same position in the family. And we'd hand these cards out. It'd be like me handing the cards out to you today, and then I would say, okay, now you have to find your family and stand in those positions. And so over there, someone, maybe say Paul's over there, he's the, he's the blue mom with a beard, and he would be yelling, Blue, 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 blue. And over here would be a group yelling, yellow, yellow, yellow. And over here yelling, orange, 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 orange. And another one would be yelling, uh, yeah, uh, red, red, red. And finally they get their whole group together and then they, they try to get in their positions. And then once they got in their positions, the great news was they won if they could beat the last group from getting there. 
I mean, it was chaotic. And then when we were done, they'd all ha have to turn in their cards. They'd make this little circle, they'd turn in their cards. And then as they did, I shuffled them up. And then I, as they came back around, I gave them a card. And then they had to wait. And then as soon as it was time, I would say cheese. And they'd flip the card over. And there we go again. Red, 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 blue, 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 yellow, orange, orange, brown. And it was just so chaotic, but it was a controlled chaos because the end of the game was getting everybody in their positions. And when I think about that, I think about how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. You know, some of us think we're living in a chaotic world, and it's true, we are right now, but life has always been a little bit chaotic if you stop and think about it. I mean, even before the world even began, it says very, very, uh, very much in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Now the earth was without form and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Here you see a picture at the beginning of the universe being chaotic. It was without form. The message actually says it like this. In verse 1 it says, Earth was a soup of nothing, a bottomless emptiness, an icky blackness. Or the Living Bible says it like this. The earth was a shapeless, chaotic mass. The world was, it was in chaos. It had no form. It had no control. It had no substance. There was nothing there. But then everything changed because the Holy Spirit was hovering over the top of it, and he started to create. He started to create all this chaos by taking light and, and darkness and dividing it. And then he, from that, he, he took the sky and the water and he created that. And, and there started to become a sense of order out of this chaos. And then the dry ground came and was divided amongst the water. By the time God was done... He had taken what was once chaotic and disordered mess and brought order. He brought controlled chaos. But then sin entered in. We know that sin entered that perfect utopia. And sin is the heart of chaos. As sin begins to spread from one person to the next person, they always say, pick your friends because whoever you pick as a friend, you're probably going to turn out a little bit like that friend. And since we have a bent towards sin, the natural process is that if people start to sin, they, they seem to start to drift away and deteriorate little by little. And after a period of time, you start to see in the world some disorder uh, that God had created from the beginning of creation. And so God brought him in and intervened with Noah's day. And you know the story there where they built the ark and God put his people on that ark and kind of destroyed the rest of the world, trying to bring some order in a chaotic word, world where there was sin. God restored a sense of orderedness or controlled chaos. Well, then, as time went on, we had a, a chaos at Pentecost. Prior to the event of Acts chapter 2 that we've talked about even last Sunday, there seems to be some things that were starting to come together. Jesus, God, came down from earth, and as he came to this earth, he, he brought some chaos or some order to the chaos in people's lives. He has some incredible, powerful teachings. You heard one from Pastor Grace this morning about the ground and how they planted seeds. And those seeds get in that good soil, it rises up. And, and that was what Jesus was teaching about. He was talking about those kind of things. And people were starting to get upset because they weren't wanting to conform because of their sinful nature that was in them. And so these sinful men decide to kill Jesus. And as they killed Jesus, he goes to a tomb. But the great news is Jesus arose. And even after Jesus arose, there seemed to bring, bring about some more chaos. These disciples were hiding in, in rooms, fearful for their lives. 
it was kind of like a, the, their lives were spinning out of control because they were going to be following Jesus everywhere they went. But it became chaotic because Jesus wasn't there. But when he arose, he came and he introduced himself to them all again, saying, hey, look at my, my body, look at everything here. But they weren't following him like they were before. It was kind of chaos. But the great news is God's Spirit moved again. And he brought control to the people's lives who were living in chaos. That's what we read here in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, when he says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. See, when the Spirit of God came, there was that mighty wind, or the tongues of fire, you might say. And when you stop and think about wind and fire, I think about what does, what does wind look like when, it, when it's chaotic versus under control? I mean, when you have wind, and it's blowing, and you have the, the windmills, it creates electricity. And, and no offense, we kind of like electricity, especially when it's like 91 out, don't we? Who, who doesn't mind the air conditioner running? Does anybody? Uh, who likes the fan put on them when it's kind of hot outside? That's, that's a controlled chaos. It's, the wind's going all over the place, but it's kind of bringing it into the windmill, and the windmill takes it down the line to create the energy. But wind out of control is the tornado that blows through a city. Have you ever been through a city that has just went through a tornado? I remember... Um, we were coming home from General Assembly in 1972, 72, 70, 70, 71, 72. And I'll never forget it because they were expecting hurricanes to come, which is another form of a win. But before they got there, there were some tornadoes that hit the towns 10 minutes before we got to the towns. And as a boy of about 10 years of age, going through a town and having to go around a telephone booth, which... For kids who don't know what a telephone booth is, it was a glass window box with a telephone in it, and, and you picked it up, and you threw money into it, and you dialed up. Yeah, it was the dial, not but a dial, all right? And that thing was laying down and shattered all over, and houses were uprooted, and trees, and we just, as we went through a town, we were just driving down the road, having to go like this, trying to get around all the debris. That's when out of control. But controlled wind produces electricity. Think about that with fire. Fire that is controlled brings heat and warmth. Around a campfire at night when it's a little chilly out, it's kind of nice to sit around that campfire and, and feel the warmth of it. Or a fire could be just a, a candle lit up to get you through without stubbing your toe. But fire that's rampant, it just takes out acres and acres and acres of land and just burns it up. And that's the difference between fire under control versus fire that's out of control. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came to the scene, what seemed to be very wild with this wind, the power of the Holy Spirit and the fire, the fire that brings purification into a person's life. It seemed to be crazy and chaotic with the winds blowing and the flames are burning, and it, but it was all still under the control of the Holy Spirit. These disciples who felt like they were losing control and living in fear behind doors, and all of a sudden, they started to gain control because the Holy Spirit came on them. And when they started to come on them in a whole new way, they became bold and excited and went right out and started to speak to these people. It was controlled chaos within their lives that the Holy Spirit came in and started to control them. I mean, these people became free, became changed in a way that their lives were changing. They started to speak in other languages. Matter of fact, there were some people at that time that thought these guys have been drinking. And they said, no, it's too early to be drinking because they were so on fire for God. I mean, thousands and thousands, or I shouldn't say thousands, thousands, like 3,000 people became saved on that day. In a way, it was chaos, but it was controlled chaos. 
chaos under the control of the Holy Spirit. Last week we talked about Pentecost Sunday, a day when we remember the Holy Spirit that was becoming active in, in the lives of his disciples. It just so happens that Pentecost can happen to us. That Spirit wants to live within us. God's Spirit is still in the business of bringing control to the chaos of our lives. See, sin is still going to be in our world. And when we realize that Christ achieved victory over sin and he rose from the dead, we can face the effects of sin in our lives still, but in a, in a controlled way. At least until Christ comes again and the final battle is won and we've spent eternity with him, our lives still may feel a little chaotic at times. We'll feel like our lives are in chaos. Perhaps it's because we have sin living in our lives that causes it, or the sins of somebody else that is affecting our lives. Sin. You know, like greed. Greed is one of those things that seems to be rapid in America. Greed is one of those things you have to have more and more and more and more. I, I get a kick out of my granddaughter, Eden. Um, is it okay if I share this, Eden? All right, I'll tell them then. But yesterday, she came over to the house. As she was there, we were eating, and Monica had a, a little bun and gave her some, and we gave her some more and gave her some more, and we said, man, she just loves to eat. And Aline said, well, she just got to eat him before she even came here. And she started to rattle off all the things she had. It was like she couldn't get enough in her body. No offense, there's some of us to eat that way too. We never can get enough in our bodies. But it's that wanting and wanting and wanting where you're never satisfied. It's that um, selfishness within Always looking for what we want. And if it's not the way we want to do it, then we're not going to be a part of it, no matter what it is. And if, I, if the consideration isn't given towards me and me only, then this is, it has to be wrong. But selfishness is the beginning of sin. And sin brings about turmoil in our lives. Sin brings about messiness in families' lives. Sin be, becomes messy in our lives, messy in our homes, messy sometimes in our jobs. But this morning, you say to me, but Pastor, I'm already a Christian. I've invited Jesus into my life, but my life is, still has this chaos going on. And I want to tell you this morning that the exact same position the disciples were when they were following Jesus. They were following Jesus. They were still lacking something. Chaos was overwhelming them. But when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit got a hold of them, and it was like chaos under control. And the spirit that lived back then is still the spirit we have today living within us. If chaos is controlling your life, then you need to go back and get on your knees and talk to the Lord about the chaos and let him have it. See, the Holy Spirit wants to bring control into your life, but he can't do that unless you ask him to do that. Asking means literally just praying and praying a prayer, something like, Lord, I've tried to follow you, but my life is struggling. My life is still in turmoil, and it seems like the more I try, the more I try, the harder and harder it becomes. But I want you to control. I want to surrender my life. I want you to take this chaos, and I want you to turn it in my life that I can have peace during the times of chaos. And the great news is when you pray like that, like the disciples did, that Holy Spirit can still come in today and bring you peace and contentment, and joy, even when the chaos is going all around us. Does that mean we'll never experience chaos ever again in our lives? No, but it does mean that chaos will be under control, that fear may come, 
but it won't overwhelm us like it did the disciples. Because the Holy Spirit lives within us, we don't have to be afraid. My body's deteriorating, people. There's things that are happening today. I was like, I would have never believed it was hard to get up off a floor. It's getting harder to get up off a floor. So if you knock me down, anticipate, instead of me jumping right back up, it takes me about two minutes to get back up. But the great news is, I can still get back up. And that's how we have to live in this chaotic world where the Holy Spirit comes in and he starts to reside in our hearts that he has control in the midst of chaos. A thrown horseshoe could have affected the whole outcome of that war only for a nail, only for a nail. In fact, we see chaos all around. But the great news is the Holy Spirit is still active and alive. And God's Spirit wants to come into our lives and control in a way he did for the disciples and the messiness that was going all around them that was no longer about them, but they were able to go out and to preach the word amongst the people who had just killed Jesus and they were not afraid. That's the Spirit of God that wants to live within us, but we have to submit to that. God's Spirit is still alive today. God's Spirit is still in this room right now with us. And He's stirring. The question is, have you given Him everything of your life? What areas of your life are you struggling with that you just need to say, Lord, this is yours? I refer back to my brother. Um, I've told you guys, he's got cancer. The thing I have seen the difference in my brother is he does not run away from it. He embraces it as though it is God's plan for his life. And he's using this as a way to reach people for the kingdom as he goes through it. Is it a struggle? Absolutely. But he knows God's in control. And I think we live so much for this earth that we're so worried about our stock markets and we're so worried about what the world's doing around us that we forget about who's in control and who wants to run the business of our life. Is he running the business of your life? Because he wants to be there to help you. All you have to do is ask. Miracles do take place. Uh, I don't know if I shared this with you, but my brother's had two surgeries, six hours long. They've taken out tons of cancer in his body. And after he got one cancer, it seems like it pops up in another place. And I'm just going to share you how, how God's working in his life. He's been doing these special treatments, and finally he has started doing some chemo. And I can tell you today what was... 60, I think it's millimeters or something big of a cancer. This last week when he went to the doctor, his, this set of cancer has shrunk to 32 millimeters. But through it, everywhere he goes, he tells what God's doing in his life. Whether it's shrinking the tumor or not shrinking the tumor, making sure that some of his friends from high school that he hasn't talked to for many years they know who Jesus is because he has experienced the Jesus through his spirit that lives within him. Someone says, how do you grow a church? And here's what I said when I first started out in ministry, and I still believe this today. Give me a church a spirit-filled people who are not worried about themselves, but we so filled with the spirit of God that they can't wait to leave the building because of what God's doing in their lives, that they'll just start sharing it with other people, and other people are going to start wondering what is going on, and those people are going to come. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. And that same spirit 
lives with us today. The question is, does he have control in your chaotic world? Do you see him at work in and amongst all the chaos that's been going on? We just need to ask God to come and fill us. So this morning, I'm going to have Pastor Scott come, and we're going to sing a song here, and then I'm going to close with prayer. But I want us to remember that God brings order to chaos. It's chaos under control. And he wants to do it not just for the disciples back then, but he did it for Paul. He can do it for you. But you have to surrender you have to get deep with him and find areas of your life. Maybe your tongue is a gossip. You've got to surrender that. That it's no longer gossip, but you're sharing the great glory of what God's doing in your life. Maybe your eyes have been some places where it shouldn't be. You've, you've got to release that and turn it over to God. Maybe your attitude stunk. Maybe there are people you have to go back and ask forgiveness to. God will help you to do that through his spirit, but you have to surrender it. So when you walk out of this place, people see not the signs of the chaotic people walking down with different things on it, but you become the billboard of the spirit of God who lives in you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. So I think you're going to know this song. If you want to bow your heads, close your eyes as Scott leads us, or if you need to look at the words, feel free to. And may the Lord be with you, and may his spirit reign in you, and may it change your life like it's never changed before. Jesus, we just pray right now that, Lord, as we leave, that, Lord, you would fill us with your presence, that, Lord, everywhere we go, we would have a new outlook of life, that it would not be looking at all the chaos going around, but find, trying to find the way that we become the peace in the midst of everybody's storm. Lord, as I was thinking about uh, the things going on right now, one of the things I've been so amazed is how many people have been coming to a cause, a cause that they believe in, that they will march down the road, that they will uh, stand by and put up signs. And if there's only a few, that they will do it in different towns. Even as I was going through Bluffton last night, Lord, I saw a group of people, about 10 of them at the time, and, and they were just 
uh, waiting for someone to honk the horn and every time someone honked the horn, they would cheer for him. Lord, may that be us with your spirit. May we have a cause that we would die for, that we would die for your spirit because you died for us. And you said that if we're going to be like you, it might mean we have to go to a cross. May your spirit live in us, Lord. Move us, Lord. Change us. Change our mindset. Get rid of the selfishness that's within us, Lord, that we may be controlled by you and that our thoughts are not our thoughts, but our thoughts become your thoughts. Our hands are not our hands, but they become your hands. That our eyes become your eyes, not our eyes, Lord Jesus. That everything that we do would be glory to your name. May we look around our world right now. Lord, there are people hurting. There are people who are lonely that just need someone to listen. There's some people today, Lord, that, that uh, just need to hear the great news of your salvation. As I was talking with a, a gentleman this week, Lord Jesus, and how he brought the conversation of, of you, may we just naturally start talking about you in a way that, Lord, others will want to come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, if there's areas of our lives that need forgiveness, Lord, forgive us. If there's areas that we need to forgive somebody else, Lord, help us to forgive them. Help us to move forward for you in everything we do, Lord. And may your spirit reign. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. May we always be looking to you each day. We pray this in your name. And all God's people said, amen. Seniors, I'm going to have you go out first. Seniors, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you go out and get by your table. If your family members want to go with you, that'd be great. At this time, I'm going to have our pastors come in, and they're going to dismiss you by rows. So Grace and Andrew, uh, you'll see them there. If you need to sit down for a moment, you can. But uh, go ahead and dismiss those back rows.